Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. I'm heading into my anaconda's cage to start my day and uh, Aries is up here in his log, which I find very interesting, but I wanted to get this here. We actually have an ivy shed. Now, unfortunately, she has been shedding in one piece lately, but today she had part of it on land and look at there's actually part of it over here in the water. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fish this out real quick. Uh, get this out here. Get this up on land. And again, it looks like a good shed. It just looks like it broke in half, basically. So we aren't gonna have that beautiful long shed that we've been getting the last three or four times, but nevertheless, Ivy looks amazing now. Oh my gosh, what a way to start the day to see that fresh thing. You know, again, it's like a new life, a new beginning, absolutely gorgeous. She's definitely gonna be ready to feed in the next day or two, which will be really cool. And I don't know how long Aries is gonna stay up there, but I think it's pretty interesting. Regardless, a lot to do today. We're gonna to start the day with a little bit of snake egg cutting. And by snake egg cutting, I'm actually gonna cut a clutch that's a double head albino clown to an albino clown. Clown ball pythons are amazing. A couple babies were already pipped out, so we'll see what happens. In the meantime, I'm taking my normal morning kind of cruise around. Look at how amazing baby Kush looks like. Just every, you know, every morning coming in and kind of seeing the animals just puts me into a bright mood no matter what the day is. But, and I also love cutting eggs. So what do you say? We just go ahead, jump into this and then move on with the rest of our day. Well, we kind of have an egg cutting for you and kind of not really because the truth is is that I woke up this morning went in the incubator room and I was excited about this clutch double head albino clown bred to an albino clown so we could get a bunch of clowns head albinos albino clowns like that but guess what uh, the snakes kind of ruined my party and decided to hatch out last night but I'm not upset about it to be honest with you because first off we have two little albino clown ball pythons that have already hatched out of the egg. Look at how incredible those are. Again, double recessive, albino and clown. And then we have a little clown had albino that has hatched out as well. And then every egg except for one has already pipped. So uh, I don't know exactly what's in it. I see one little head that looks like a clown. Now, listen, on average in this, we should get one in four should be albino clown, one in four should be clown head albino, and then we should get an albino and a normal that's double head albino clown in these eggs. That's on average. So, so far we've already been crushing the average because we had two, four, six, eight, ten eggs. Theoretically, we should have two albino clowns, and we already have two albino clowns. So we're good to go here. Let's go ahead and see what else is in these other eggs. Even if their heads are pipping out, we can look and see what's going on. So this little guy's got his head out. Uh, let's just open it up. We know it's a clown. Let's see what it looks like. And I tell you what, I was hoping that we'd get a handful of clowns in this clutch, and it looks like every animal I'm looking at here is clown, which is absolutely incredible. This is a really nice reduced clown right here. So again, these clowns would be half albino because the adult male was an albino clown. So, so far uh, we've got two clowns now, two albino clowns. Let's see what's in this egg right here. I can't tell because it's pipped out, but I don't see what's inside it. Let's take a look. All right, let's see what we got going on in here. It looks like an albino for sure. This one looks like a normal albino though. This does not look like an albino clown. So, oh, and it popped its head right on out too. So, okay, so that's the first normal non-clown animal that we have, but it was an albino, so I'm not complaining. Still an awesome animal. Uh, let's keep moving on. We got one, two, three, four, five more eggs to cut. Let's see what this one is. And again, this, this clutch just was like really ready to hatch and just popped out. Another clown head albino. That puts us up to three clown head albinos in this clutch so far. An albino, a couple of albinos. Wow, this odds are so much better than I expected in this clutch. How awesome is that? Uh, we And we still have four eggs to go. Let's see what else we got. All right, I tell you what, man. I, oh, another clown! Are you kidding me right now? I tell you, you know, the clutches that really have mattered this year, we have crushed the odds on. And, and you know, so we've missed on some clutches. There's no doubt about that. But the truth is the heavier hitting clutches have seemed to really go in our favor. This one is incredible. We're already up to five clowns. Uh, that's crazy. We should theoretically only have two, maybe three if we're lucky. We already have five. And we've got three eggs to go. Let's see what we're gonna have here. Wow, what a clutch already. Woo, doggy. All right. Get out of here, another clown! Woo! -hoo. And this was a pretty cool looking clown too. It's got some nice blocking on it. So, oh my God, this is crazy. This is not clown to clown. This is clown to double head. And we are just crushing the odds with clowns. That's cool, two eggs to go. Wow, man, I tell you what, what a way to go. I'm so excited about it. Another clown, are you kidding me right now? That, dude, this is, let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
We got 10 eggs total, nine have been cut so far, nine clowns or albino clowns. One egg to go. Oh my gosh, the odds have been amazing. Let's go ahead, cut this last egg. It, this is gonna be crazy if this is a clown or an albino clown. I'm gonna freak out. Guess what? It's an albino clown. An albino clown. So we had three albino clowns. We had seven, six or seven clowns and one albino heifer clown. Not one normal in this clutch. Wow, gee, it's crazy. I mean, that clutch was a dream clutch when it comes to genetics. That is amazing. So, uh, wow, there you have it, guys. An amazing egg cutting clutch. Clown galores, unbelievable. Holy cow, guys, when you get odds like that and hit those odds, uh, it gives you tingles. It's so amazing. But, you know, uh, I was kind of thinking about, like, where did snake egg cutting come from? Like, who started it? I'm going to be totally honest with you. When I was, like, 16 years old, a guy named Mark Bell still breeds a lot of snakes, has an amazing collection, actually was cutting Burmese python eggs. He showed me how to cut Burmese python eggs, like I said, 15, 16 years old. So I don't know where he learned how to cut snake eggs. And, I, and we're talking back in the late, 80s now so I wonder who the first person cut snake eggs was and why they cut the snake eggs and what they were doing again when you started getting into mutations like Mark did with Burmese we were looking like it was an albino to a head and albino berms were 1600 bucks so he wants to see how many albinos were in that clutch uh, you know I wonder where it started I don't know if anyone does know comment down below uh, I would love to find the origins of it but like I said I've been uh, cutting eggs ever since I started you know because that was what I was taught right from the beginning so uh, just kind of interesting just wondering where the origins came from little update on my little female nosy bee panther chameleon she is doing so good and she is amazing and you guys came up with some amazing name ideas i'm going to be honest with you blew me away but i wanted to kind of keep it similar with the whole karma kind of you know that theme right so there are a few people that actually said destiny would be a good idea and again there were so many that we were considering but i think that we're going to name this little girl destiny i mean that's cool right karma and destiny i mean how awesome is that and again she is beautiful now that she's settled in and she's obviously very tame too so it's really an amazing animal hopefully one day maybe she'll get with karma and we'll have little babies and uh, it will truly be the destiny of karma so i've been doing some research and honestly all roads kind of lead to my buddy kevin over at nerd as being maybe the first person that started cutting eggs so what do you say we get him on a facetime and find out if there's truth to us and uh, what the story is behind it. So Kevin, I was doing some research on egg cutting and it, it apparently, it maybe you were the first person that actually started cutting eggs. So tell I me what- It was me. This is way back when doing ball pythons. And Brian, you remember all the gold stripe ball pythons? Yeah. And all? So I would get like these dark snakes, these crazy snakes. We, we of course were spending good money and I'd breed them together and I'd get nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. what's going on? So somewhere along the line, I decided that maybe, because you remember the pits of eggs, of the, they're hatching them out of God and that's Yep, exactly, meat. yep. And they get hot and dry and all these weird things. So I decided, well, maybe they're putting these eggs through these weird temperature spikes during a certain period of the eggs, the, the development of the, the neonate, the embryo, and maybe at day 20 to 26, if you raise the temperature up, or maybe let's say pattern was being formed, then maybe that is why these snakes were right, and they were jungle and all that stuff, because these things were not genetic. Right. So what I did, I would take a bunch of eggs, and I'd go, I'm going to take this clutch, and at day 20 to day 25, I'm going to hyper the temperature up, and then I'm going to take another clutch and the drop the temperature. Mm -hmm. I did it in like five, I think it was like five or seven day increments. And I did it to multiple of it to try to see if I could cause a strike. Or they do it. I was doing all these little weird things in my own little head. Well, I'm like, I need to actually get into these eggs and see what's going on. I look where the blood vessels are and I would then tear it into the eggs so we have the outside leather coating. Right. Uh, and then we have the inside membrane. And what I would do is I'd basically termite, I would basically call I was calling it termiting into my eggs. And I'd termite into the egg and I'd cut away an area that had the amount of vascularization on the egg, you know, the, the, the top of the egg, something up there where all the human was leaking out. And I'd make a window and there was, I would even take like a, like a little light that would go in there, like these egg lights or whatever. Right. And I'd sit there, I would 
do anything I could, like I'd be looking through to see what's going on, to see when I could detect pattern. And if I think I remember right, I think I could see pigment darting around day 8 to 34. Wow. So what I did, I would get the egg. Now this is the problem. If you go into an egg and you hit a blood, you're, you're allowing it to bleed into the egg. I think that's where you get bacterial problems right. and all that. If I would go into the egg, I would not break any blood vessels, and then I would put a little coat of macetracin or Vaseline around the hole, and then I would put a little bit like wax paper or syringe. So you could I just could peel that off. Yes. Oh my god. So I would go, I would go into the egg, and I'm like, oh, and I look, and because I'm trying, I was doing my own little like experiment, and the experiment was was literally pretty useless because I think the eggs have to become distressed where they're drying out right. and hot and I wasn't trying to hang out but you know cool temperatures and hot temperatures I don't think I was ever able to confidently go I can take a bunch of eggs and I know when to press it by making it cool right. or hot I could cause these crazy things I really came up with a couple a little bit of ripings but nothing that was like wow the right. count for those that make animals people are like what hell? And mind you, I'm not doing the butcher of Baghdad, okay? All right. Yeah. And so I was doing my things. Of course, I was also impatient. I wanted to see what things first. One of the first things you can do if you really want to be artful, go into a dark room, take a powerful flat but look through and put all your blood vessels are, then write where the least amount of blood vessels are with the pen. Then you go out of that room into a well-lit room. And I take four steps, and I I put my thumb against the egg, and I create the dimple. And then I put the four step like this, and then I cry. And when okay. I cry, I cause the egg to start tearing. Right. And then I put the four steps in there, I open, 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 and I create an edge on right. that egg, start tearing the oh, leather okay. coating away. And, and one thing I believe when I am going into eggs, if I can get into the egg, create a window, and then drain. Maybe 10% of that unit, so I create an air pocket on the top. Then the neonate, as it's moving around, suddenly comes up and there's a, there's a sack in there and it breaks through the sack and it's kind of like a racing time. It needs to cut out of that egg before it exhausts the oxygen that's in the blood that is absorbed through the shell. So I learned all these little things. And so people pretty much probably blame it on me. Yeah. I was doing that, and uh, you know, I remember posting pictures. Looking inside an egg yeah. with my Mavic camera, you know, or whatever. And I was doing that, and then you know, I'm still not like the butcher, and just like right. murder, you know, right. just going through stuff. I kind of, I, I, I'm a little bit more timid when it comes right. to that kind of stuff. Wow, but but that's you, it. So that's the story. On me, I guess. No, so that's it. You're the one to blame. But that's that's actually, I, I didn't know the story. I mean, I'm glad that you did. Thank you for sharing, man. I appreciate it. Uh, that was awesome, Kevin. Thanks so much, dude. All right, guys. Have a good day. <laughs> See you, man. Thanks, dude. See you, dude. Bye. So, wow, guys, I literally didn't know. I was doing my research after I mentioned it, and uh, everything went back to the earliest thing I could find was Kevin McCurley, good friend of mine, so I figured I'd call him. You heard it from the horse's mouth now, what actually happened. I'll put all the links in the description to his channel and all his stuff. Really a great guy to follow, by the way. You gotta follow his stuff. Amazing pioneer on everything. So there you have it. You can blame Kevin for cutting eggs. That was crazy. I didn't even know it, and now I know. So we went on a little adventure today to try to figure out why we cut snake eggs, how it all started. I wasn't expecting to do it, but it turned out to be pretty cool, and I learned a whole bunch. I hope you guys did too. And if you enjoyed this video, right up here, there's a playlist of me cutting eggs. You can watch a ton of videos if you so choose. Could you also do me a favor, right up on this side, you can subscribe to my podcast channel called checking in we podcast a lot lately over on this side you can subscribe to this vlog channel please turn your post notifications on have an absolutely wonderful day remember be kind to someone and i promise i'll see you tomorrow